wait it. Retweeted! There we go. Hey, folks, welcome to Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry, the Let's Try program here on the mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. I am your navigator, as always, Ian Horner, and today we are continuing our uh, epic build. Uh, epic in size, length, and, and most uh, other <laughs> measures of this uh, large lad of a gun plot. Hit the MSN upside down. Nightingale. Uh, yes, it's a large kit. It's here next to me. Uh, you may have noticed a slight difference in uh, the uh, the layout of today's show. Um, coming to you from a different angle, we're trying this out because uh, there's a chance we may need to use this today. Uh, this being, of course, the uh, project from a number of weeks back, which is a spray booth for spraying things with paint because um, I've made some choices in life and uh, these choices are going to affect the course of this show and the course of my life going forward. Oh boy, have I been getting a good use of this. Uh, let's, let, let's get into it here, first of all. Um, now, you may be asking yourself, what's a Let's Try program? Well, good question. Next question. No, the uh, Let's Try program, Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, is just a program where we get together and uh, do some projects that we've never done before. Maybe we have, maybe we want to do them again, but we've got no expectations of how things are going to turn out because we are trying it out. Because we can't break things further than we've already broken them sometimes. Uh, let's hop on over to the overhead view because uh, the big iPhone, that's what I like to call it, because get out of here, little iPhone. Uh, lets me know where things are. God, I don't know where to put this. So, uh, astute viewers of the program may note that we may have already finished the uh, the Nightingale. We've we've uh, we've gone through the manual here, and we've we've reached, you know, we reached the end. We we stuck the tail thing into the uh, into the we boop the, the reverse snoot. Uh, we don't have a uh, an action base, let alone two action bases, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So yeah, we're, we're done, right? Well, no, because there's a couple things we need to deal with uh, in this model. First of all, and i got to get these out because we're probably going to need to reference them. I keep them in the box because they're safer that way. Things that we need to add to this model. We need to add uh, this rather large water slide decal kit because we need to make it look all pretty with the, the decals. We need to add some of these uh, photo etched metal parts because we want to make it look uh, nice and shiny in the right places and not the wrong places. And then we have all of these other metal parts that need to uh, get swapped out for the thrusters and chains and whatnot. So we still got to do all that, but before we can do those things, we're going to need to do something else to this kit. And that's because for the past couple weeks, uh, sitting up on the shelf next to our large friend here, has been the first Gunpla that I had ever worked on, which is, we're going to have a little bit of a uh, show and tell here, this gentle friend right here. The uh, <clears throat> GP03 Dendrobium stamen, uh, the, the little guy that goes inside the big guy at the end of 083. Oh, Stardust Memories. <laughs> uh, yeah, Imreal. Microsoft and Microset are very good for decals, yes, with a caveat, and I'll get to that in just a second here. So yeah, this, is a, this was a model that I put together back when I was living in Japan, and uh, just had it sitting on the Loading Radio Live set for a long time until I started getting into Gunpla a bit more and, uh, and built the spray booth and started building this thing, the, the, uh, the Nightingale. And I thought to myself, uh, boy, would sure be nice to, uh, to clean this, 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 gun, this model up. Uh, maybe I'll uh, take it apart, wash it off, you know, wash the nicotine stains and oil that have uh, developed over the course of, God, it must be at least, you no, know, it would have been 2006. So yeah, over 10 years now. Uh, so yeah, pulled it apart, dishwashed the whole thing in some bags. No, I didn't dishwash it. I put it in an ultrasonic bath with uh, detergent. So that happened uh, there. 
uh, and then decided, well, what the heck? Let's uh, we, we've got these uh, these uh, this airbrush. Why not try painting it? Why not? We can't make it look any worse than it. Sorry, Simril. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, I do not currently smoke. I did while I was living in Japan, but uh, not currently. So that's that's where all of the uh, the nicotine stains came from. But as you can see, they've now been coated over. Uh, learned how to use uh, the Max Kobayashi style of painting, which involves laying down uh, gray coats, uh, some some slightly colored or tinted uh, white coats. So I used uh, I actually used some old uh, <laughs> writing ink to make the uh, the the paint slightly purple, and then get some shading and highlighting in there. Gave it some gloss coats, gave it uh, some decals, used Microsol and Microset, and they are great, except for whatever it was that I used uh, to as a solvent. And I'm not sure if there's any pieces on here that you can see. Uh, no, none on this one. Unfortunately, um, the Microsol reacted with either the paint or the... Uh, the coating I was using on the uh, on the gun. But let me actually grab the thing so you can see, because I think it's rather interesting and I'm rather upset and I would like to be able to help people out from making this decision in the first place. So, uh, mm. so we have a couple accidents in the decal set. First off, woo, hello. <laughs> there was the... Uh, this decal, which did not go on. It was a rather large piece that goes from there all the way to there. And unfortunately, uh, it got folded up in the in the process. But thankfully, I mean, if you look up at the uh, little corner up here, this is the result of the microsol and setting. That's, that uh, softened the decal enough that it was able to recess itself directly into that little hole. And I'm rather proud of that particular one. However... This is what happened to some of the weaponry. Uh, and this is what happens, I think, when you rub your microsol into uh, with a brush a little bit too much trying to push your uh, decal around. And so that uh, that was a sadness on the bazooka. I don't know what I'll do with this. Probably just I'll probably forego the decals and just uh, do it and uh, do another coat of uh, the black or uh, gray on that to make it look OK. But very happy with how this turned out. And so, because I'm so happy with how it's turned out, with its beautiful uh, knuckles and its its uh, shading, I put it next to... God, this is such an unwieldy beast. I put it next to this guy, and I think to myself, this doesn't look that hot anymore. <laughs> and so I've unfortunately... Uh, pushed myself into a sitch where now I need, in order to be happy, this is going to need to get painted. So what we're going to be doing today is uh, starting the prep for painting on this. Uh, we're going to pull it apart, uh, we're going to separate out some pieces, and uh, we're going to set it up such that I can actually do some work on this on the show, so you can see what's going on, but you know, in the case where we have two binders like this, how about I prepare one of them on stream, and then I can do the other one on its own. And that will be, uh, uh, that, that will hopefully reduce the amount of time that we need to actually get this project done. Uh, so we can get it done in a reasonable time. And uh, you can always, you can all follow along as well from home. Uh, Samuel says, not sure it needs to be painted, but it could absolutely do with some shading. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. I could probably get away with that, but on the other hand, I also uh, have not ever done the shading, and I'm not... I am now better at full uh, painting. Haven't done the, the just shading on the plastic itself. Panel lining makes a world of difference, but doesn't always look great on red plastic, says Pat Bear. Yeah, it's... Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of this bare plastic, and I don't think that... Uh, that just adding a matte finish to this is going to is going to bring it up to the same level of happiness I had with that other one. So I'm going to put the work in. Um, means more time before another model, but hey, hey, ain't ain't, ain't a uh, ain't even a worry. Samuel asks if I joined Cameron in Warhammer 40k yet. Not just yet, but uh, perhaps sometime in the future when I actually get around to these things. 
uh, spread out keeps a semi gloss clear coat. Uh, that's actually what I hit the the uh, GP03 with last, and that uh, turned out quite nice on top of it. But uh, that said, stop doing that, Ian. I want you to know one other thing. Uh, just because I'm rather proud of this. This is the result. <clears throat> Go over to the uh, the box oh hobby over here. And let me show you where it came from. Uh, yep, there's the white, there's the blue, and there's the black. Hope you like uh, paints because uh, we were using Deco Art Crafters Acrylic uh, thinned 50/50 with. Uh, where is it? Yes. With Turbo Power All Season Windshield Washer. That's, uh, <laughs> not the, uh, I feel like I, I did this one on hard mode, and that's why I feel so good about it. So let's, uh, put it to the side here. Uh, now before we can get to, um, Putting this away. I figured I should still do some assembly. Oops, the mic slipped. Nope, still there. Good. Uh, still need to do some assembly. And as much as I like standing, uh, standing GP03 Chan posed in the classical Gundam reaching pose, um, I want him off the ground. I want him uh, off the ground. I want him in such a state that I can send him back to the loading ready run site site c studio c uh shelves in a uh in such a way that is befitting its new status and for that I, I got an action base but then i realized i need to put it together i did not realize that the action bases come fully un, un, unassembled so let's assemble an action base shall we uh where are mine nippers I think I left them around here. Ah, there they are. So let's uh, get the instructions out. Let's build us an action base. Let's put our friend on it. And then let's get to tearing the Nightingale apart. Do we go extra and panel line the action base? I, you know what? I may just uh, give it a, a uh, matte coat, uh, matte clear coat, just to make it look nice. It's, it did a really good job with the base on the, uh, the wave colony model I did, but yeah. Um, that said, blah, 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 blah. Similar last, painting medium isn't that expensive. You know, why did you use windshield wiper washer fluid? Well, because it, it was an extra expense. Um, and I understood that you could do that and it turned out to be just fine. Um, I might, uh, yeah, I, I, I even, I made my own airbrush cleaner slash thinner as well, which seemed to work fine, but, uh, we'll, see about make I'll have to make another batch of that actually too I used almost an entire uh, squirter worth in that one job where was I going with this right we need to get our meat butters out here here let's stick that down there and uh oh yeah I think for the nightingale itself I mean not that I think I know for a fact uh we've got first step will be some Vallejo surface primer and then we are going to dip into my first foray into uh, good paints. I figured I'd check out the Vallejo Mecca color line. Again, not sponsors, but hey, give me a call. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, airbrushing is definitely a different skill than, uh, than hand painting, but I, I think I took to it pretty quickly. All right, let's find out what our next step is here. In the base, we need to take out one piece that I'd already removed. So let's re-take that out. Good. And we'll get to the screws later, I'm sure. It's certain. And let's see, what was next? We have the BA. 3C1. That's this little guy here. We need the BA3C4. Yes, BAB2. BA3B1. 
into BA3 C4. There we go. That little clicky bit here. Let's keep going on that. Ooh. Got a nice little... Uh... Oh, yes, Gundam Girls. Thank you, Nico Oki, for uh, providing us with that. Okay, if I ever need a metallic red, the Tamiyo Candy Red is good. Might be, might be something to uh, look at in the future. I'm not, uh, not big on metallics myself, but who knows? I may run into a model that just requires that kind of look. BA3C5. Boop. And boop. And boop. I recall that we were sent ages ago in uh, in mail time an action base and i don't know where it ended up in the moon base <laughs> remember it was last stuck with the uh the unbuilt and partially built gunpla but bac3 3 that's the one when i went in to check uh recently could not find it so i had to head out to the local hobby shop which i'm very excited to find out does pre-ordering for premium bondi and gets them shipped in so that's handy for september when they release the brand new premium bondi full armor double zeta one of my thickest friends i mean we, 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 we've barely met i've only spent 52 episodes with them but I would call him a good friend. Mm. Daily Maple Syrup asks, do you plan on building a display case for all your gunpla? I was actually hoping to run into a, a bell jar at, at Winners or uh, one of those other liquidation shops uh, in the next uh, little while, but we'll see. Not planning on building cases, but uh, would not say no to a case if it, uh, it fell upon me. I just recently took possession of a detolf uh the the ikea uh, the ikea warhammer uh display cases uh but is this going to the right place yes it is okay but i will say that um how the heck oh that just goes down here okay cool currently my detolf is filled with my uh, girls of the Japanese Self Defense Force and All Nippon Railways uh, and the All Nippon Airways uh, uniform girl figure sets. So, yeah. Boop. Let's get it in there. Uh, next up is BA3C2, which is, I believe, the top end there. BA3C2 off the rails. Let's do this. There we go. Thankfully, I don't feel the need to sand down any nub mistakes on, on an action base uh, piece. This is really cool, though. These, these are extremely nicely made. Uh, and now we need BA3C16 and BA3C15. Fifteen and sixteen. There we go. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, unfortunately we have uh no IKEAs in town here in Victoria, so any sort of uh, extra shelving I might want to pick up on a whim. Yeah, it cannot be a whim, I need to plan well ahead. Or any IKEA runs. That, and I also have to make sure that there, things are in stock when said run is happening, which is always the most difficult part. All right, let's see if we can't shave that down just a bit. There we go. Make it nice and clean. You too. Oh my gosh. What is even your major malfunction? 
There we go. Nice and clean. All right. And let's get this on the top here. Bloop and bloop. And that's pretty simple. Okay. And then 14 and 13, which are just right there and there. Easy and also peasy. And also cheesy. Because you know I'm a big fan of them delicious cheesy peas. I... A, cheesy peas, non-extant, and B, um, you know, I do like cheese and I do like peas. So I would probably like the cheesy peas. What's Ian going on about again? You may ask. Uh, check out the Fast Show, I think. Pretty sure that was the Fast Show. No, lemon squeezy on the other hand, that's uh, that's dangerous. You need to have a permit for that. Okay, does that matter which side it's on? I don't think, well, if it does, Let's do it right. Okay, there we go. It matters. Ooh, cheesy snow peas might be nice too. You get the little crunch. If your regular peas crunch, you're either doing it wrong or you should see a dentist. Or maybe you're just having some dehydrated peas. Be sure to check if your peas are dehydrated before you crunch them. Ah, uh, yay, yay. This one wants and screw. It says it wants a large screwdriver for that too. So that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be a fun one. All right. Uh, nut doll. We need our nut. I believe is in the nut bag. Now the peanut is neither a pea nor a nut. No, wait, it is a nut. It's not even a nut. <laughs> he shares more in common with the peanut than it does with most other things. Most other things in total. Ooh, uh, which one are you? Oh, good. This is cool. Uh, didn't realize this about the instructions. It's slightly behind there. But you can see there's a tiny screw picture here, which is supposedly one-to-one. -one with the real screw, and that's not the right length. So let's try the other screw and see if that works. And the answer is, that is the correct screw. Hurrah! The other screw goes elsewhere. Oh, where is my nearest screwdriver? It's in the office. Um, well, let's get the uh, the plastic parts out here first. B A three C eight and eleven. Oh wait, and we need uh, nine as well. Eight, eleven, and nine. All right, let's click these out. Yeah, and remember, if your nippers are making clicking sounds, you may want to adjust your angle or pressure. Okay. There we go. And we wanted the 11, right? 11. And let's click that down. And there we go. Okay, and we'll be right back with some screwdriver action. By right back, I mean you'll be staying here. I'll be right back. I can still go into the other room. And continue to speak with you through the magic of radio waves. Hello. Corey says hello through the magic of radio waves. 
Ah, electromagnetic interference. I mean, it's not interference if it's wanted, right? I don't know that there is an appropriate driver in here. That one seems okay. Let's say yes, but wait, can the bigger one go in there? No, the bigger one is too big. And we'll relay your comments back to Corey when, uh, <laughs> when we can all see her at the same time. Ah, uh, this just goes like this. This goes inside. This goes over top. And then the screw goes in, or the nut goes in here. There we go. And the screw goes in there. Yeah, that was something I wasn't able to actually finish uh, assembling or disassembling in the GP03 because it was uh, screwed in such that the uh, screws, the heads were, the screws were really terrible and uh, they were starting to get strippy as I tried to pull them out. So I didn't completely disassemble the GP03, only mostly. BA3C12. BA3C12 is right down here. Let's click that out. And then click this out. <laughs> and that connects with what here? That goes, ah, on BA3B1. And B A. ah, so this one, this one, and this one here. Let's click them out. Go. Thrill as Ian constructs accessories for his plastic dolls of robots. Technically, they're not robots because they're not autonomous. They're, they're in fact a vehicle, a weapon of war. Dang, you could absolutely go ham on finishing up these action bases, too. But I like the bases that tend to disappear as well, so... I don't know. Enough theming to make it disappear and seem right for the context, but... Which is why I didn't go with, like, a red one. <laughs> Uh, these three pieces. So, this goes like this. This goes on top of that. And this part... Uh... Aha! Uh -huh. Yes. And then... Like this. I see. You couldn't see any of that. I'm the worst. So that goes like that. This goes in down here. Giving you the chance to lock it up. It's a pretty tight fit. Is there anything I can... I need to trim down or need... No. I mean, I could sand it down, but I'm not going to because that's... <laughs> I'll just mark it up. I don't want to mark it up yet if I'm not going to paint it. Okay. And i got to make sure this goes in the right direction, which is like this. Okay. I think that's how we want it. And then that just clicks together like this. Yes, 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 I see how this goes. Good. 
do not think about de-seaming this in. <laughs> Alright, that looks good. Uh, next up, we need uh, BA3, C7, and 6, which I believe are nearly the last two pieces on this runner here. Click that out. Click this out. Ah! Some of these sprues have some pretty severe bubbling up in the uh, near the edge. Thankfully, nothing that's been uh, affecting the actual build itself. But yeah, <laughs> not a fan of screws in uh, in gunpla. But that's really just kind of a personal opinion. I don't know. Screws, I feel like, should be used in situations where things need to be unscrewed at some point in the future, but I don't think that's always practical. There we go, that's locked. Uh, so, hole goes down through this side, thusly. This side comes in like this. And those go together in a straight line, not like how I've done it. There we go. Good mating. Um, and then this chunks itself right in here for, aha, adjustability. Nice. I mean, we might as well add the nameplate, because why not? I'll have to print something out for that. Or find a sticker or something. <laughs> or make a sticker. Or just put my name on it. Maybe I should just sign this. Made by Ian Horner, and also... Base made by Ian Horner. Burp. Well, it looks kind of nice. Yeah, and that is uh, runner complete. Oof. All right. Okay, now we get to decide things here. Um, about which one goes in this one's butt. These are all the same size, right? No, they are slightly different. They are slightly thicker. So let's see if we can uh, eyeball it here. Or wait, let's uh, let's measure because they're hopefully measured there. Let's flip over our friend. Uh, let's flip open his area and, and just get in there, I guess. So I need a good flat measurement. And that appears to be... Oh, come on. Don't do this to me! All right. Uh, I don't want to scratch it either, but it appears to be... He's going to be the 11. Whatever the largest one is. So that's BA, B3, 10, which is also, if you look at it, the largest one. Okay, where am I at here? Are these even marked? No, they're not marked. Therefore, I can just choose the one that's right. And that is this one. Good. Good. Yes, Biotarkus, we are... Uh, or sorry, not Biotarkus. Uh, who was... Asking the question. No one's asking a question. No one is asking any questions. Oh. Good. Everything is straightforward. That's what I like. That goes there, and uh, I suppose these all just stay as they are. We may need them for future action bases, but I feel like this one 
am mostly complete. Am I right? So you can chop off the top of them if you need to. Uh, otherwise, just goes in. Let's make some space in his uh, leggies for the application of... God, I'm so paranoid about moving this around too. There is so much fragile plastic in this. Just from being ancient and also being heavily uh, coated in paint. All right, let's see if we can get that up in there. Okay. Twist the thigh a bit. Oops. Oh no, the back wings are coming off. Ugh. Okay, everything's coming apart. Everything is terrible. If we can't remove these legs or at least separate them out a bit there we go all the way up inside and now we have a uh, a properly mounted uh, one-legged Gundam Let's fix that. Let's let's re-engage the legs. Let's look into getting this posed in a way that I really like. I really love the de the uh, the details the decals add here in the back of these skirt armor and little ones you can actually just up in the end here. No one else gets to see those, but <laughs> they're there, and I get to enjoy it. I almost might, I almost tempted to come back and hit this with some weathering as well, but that's a, uh, that's a project for future Ian, I think, or maybe future today, Ian, we'll see. But yeah, I like this. I like it. And then we could probably go real ham on this in terms of height and whatnot. Oh yeah. Check that noise out. Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna put that back there as a base. Yeah, let's play around with this a little bit late. Well, no, let's play around with this now. And uh, let's bring that back down a bit, because I think it's a bit high right now. <laughs> oh god, I haven't decided whether or not to do it, Wiggins. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a well-deserved pun foul right there. Ooh. Okay, this is tight in a way that I don't like. The base, I mean. Not the... There we go. Okay, that's locked in position. Um... That's it. I am, in fact, incredibly ready for the weathering, should we decide to get to that. But I think we're going to have our time filled with uh, just display in general. Or not display, but uh, with maneuvering. Oh, wait a minute. This is what I want. Angled like this. And then we can put the nameplate on the other side. Uh, no, I like the nameplate. Oh, wait, I can do that. And that doesn't change anything. Damn it! Okay. Nameplate there. Seems good. Seems good. Let's, uh... Let's leave this as is for the moment. Give him a little pointy toe flight action. Spread those out a bit there. Yeah, 
move the uh, skirt up into light heat position. Don't drop the model. And, uh, yeah. I think for now, that's, uh... Ah! For now, that's gonna be fine. Boy, they sure do like to pop out these caps, don't they? Okay. Um... Let's put that to the side. Come on. Undo. Get back. Redo. And then, uh you away and bring out the main event we begin to disassemble our good good large friend it's okay with some sticker material in here i'm not sure what this is for hmm who can say unless you know what the uh, the sticker material that came with the action base is for. In which case, uh, please let me know. Oh. I mean, I, I, Sarah, I would assume it's for the sign, but uh, assumptions are not always the correct thing to do, especially when building a gun plot. Thanks for the uh, compliment, Matt, too. I'm really happy with how this one turned out, and I'm hoping I can uh, replicate it with the, uh, with the Nightingale. So we're going to get up one of my favorite tools so far, uh, a quarter sheet pan that I've lined with a kitchen towel. And that's what we're going to use to organize our pieces because it keeps things nice and soft and then you can just drape another towel over top of it should you want to, if you need to keep things from getting covered in dust and oil, etc. So. Uh, TTK Blazer. Today's gunpla is the HGUC uh, Nightingale. Um, should I follow the instructions as we remove things? I think that might not be a bad idea. No. Or you know what? Let's just start with what's what's attached here. So, gun is attached to hand it feels like so let's have a look at that yep gun very much attached to hand in a real way so let's just pop it off the hand and these are going to be going in together into the same sort of uh the same color scheme initially though i feel like i am absolutely going to uh de-seam this Oh, there's a nice... Maybe not? Ugh. It feels like... The... I... First I thought that was a seam line down there, but that looks appe... that appears to actually be a, uh, a panel line. So what we're going to need to do is very carefully when we're uh, cleaning it up, uh, clean up those nubs on the end there so that doesn't come out looking like ass when we do paint it. Maybe just give it a bit of a, a hit with a... Uh, one of our emery boards but i think we'll want to take it apart before we do that similar thing with the hand here that hand needs to come apart and we're just going to use our fingernail to do so because this is a two-part hand i'm really happy that they started doing uh these sorts of angled uh wrist pieces here because it makes it a lot easier to uh, to put together in the uh, in the end however these hands um i'm not a fan of the uh the the and guard being part of the print, because that means this will be a masking operation where I have to mask off the fingers and then paint the red of that by itself, because we're absolutely painting that red too. Why wouldn't we? Let's get that in there. Uh, similar thing with the weaponry. Weaponry is going to be one of the last things we do. I think I'm just going to throw those in a little bag that I uh, kept all the weaponry in. <laughs> That'll be handy. If it'll fit. Thank God it'll fit. <laughs> Just have to take the... the beam portion off. That's actually one of the things I need to finish up on the GP as well, is the... Uh, uh, putting a little bit of color, a little bit of white, uh, shaded up the beam saber. Just to give it a bit more of a 
full beamy look. I'm going to throw the hand in there too, as well as the other hand off the wrist. Might as well get that done now. Keep things together. All right, hands together, hands across side seven. Let's do the same thing with these uh, miniature skirt beam sabers on the sub arms. They are sub arms, not changing, not bits. And uh, okay, let's start with the shield. Shield is absolutely going to be a unit in and of itself in terms of uh, painting this. This is just going to come out. So we're going to need to prime everything. But uh, this is going to be... Yeah, we're, we're going to paint this individually, so we might as well uh, pop it off. Right? Right. This was the stressful part uh, with the GP03 doing it, was I did not want to shatter or break any parts. And, you know, taking things apart very carefully and methodically, trying not to snap any pegs. And in fact, I did snap at least two, if not more, that I can't remember. <laughs> Some of them pretty important for uh, transformability and what do you call it? gimmicks but this one looks like it's got some really thick uh sort of things so that's good ragulia uh you know what i haven't seen build fighters and normally i don't uh mess with alternate universe stuff however the reason the, the fact that build fighters uh has uncle ramba absolutely uh top I really should uh, give that show a little bit of a watch. Uh, Orcs want to ask, what's my favorite Gundam? That was, uh, for the longest time, the GP03 uh, statement. But I'm really... I also love the Zeta. Really excited for the premium Bandai double Zeta coming in, uh, in September. But I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I go back and forth. I... I can definitely say, though, that the majority of, or that my favorite designs come from the Universal Century, because they, uh, the, when they get extra, they get extra in uh, uh, certain ways that I prefer. <laughs> mm. Here was a Death Sight, says Orcs One. It's, I mean, the, people love the Death Sights. Oh, is Mike still rubbing? I'm going to move it down a bit here. Pat, I very much would love your review of the official part separator because uh, I have done things to my uh, my spudger end of this knife. I don't even know if this is supposed to be a spudger end, but I sure as hell use it as one and use it as one aggressively. All right. Ah, oh, I think the next thing to do so I'm trying to decide, too, if I want to uh, separate these parts out by color or by... Because uh... that's what I did last time, but I think this time we were doing it... We were going to try and make this something that we could do together. I'm going to grab another towel and another one of those uh, trays so that we can separate out into on-stream, off-stream activities. Where I've used these trays more for gunpla than I have for cooking yet. That said, these are great little trays for doing a burger night. Slap down a little bit of parchment paper and just slap your burger and fries or chips and what have you right on the tray. Sit on down in front of the TV and you're good. Makes cleanup real easy too. I, if I can say, I think... Mm, uh, <sighs> Kondo might be my favorite mech designer for Gundam, but also uh, Nagano. I'm a big fan of his work, on, uh, especially in Zeta and the early five-star stories. I like my things 
thick or wafy. I, I, I don't like in-between Gundam uh, bodies. So, uh, let's pretend... Well, let's... Uh, God, I should get another one for weaponry. You know what? The shield is an abomination. So we're just going to stick it uh, to the side with weapons on its own. I'm just going to very, very carefully... Just very lightly press fit that back together for now. Just so it stays together. Not that that's a difficult disassembly, but... You know. Alright, weapons will be their own little thing, shield included in that. Thankfully, I don't think I'm going to worry about... I'm going to have to worry about uh, messing up the decal on the shield this time. I'll have to worry about messing up the, the metal parts. And I says somehow all of the 0083 and 0080 designs, not just the Gundams, came out fantastic. Gelgoog Marine, Specialized Gyms, the... Oh, man, the Camphor! The Camphor is one of those ones I definitely want to build as soon as it has a, a good re-release that's available easily. Uh, and the High Gog. Ooh, love that High Gog. All right. Getting started. Uh, I, I keep reaching for these binders, and yes, I'm going to remove them now. These I very specifically did not shove in all the way counter to the instructions, because I knew there was a good chance I was going to be uh, taking it apart for some reason. So let's uh, leave one of these friends over in the home zone. Let's uh, take this out. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is going to be easy in a way, because we can definitely just remove all of these. As much as I love those interiors, uh, we're going to have our own booster party of itself later with our own fresh boosters. Uh, let's get this out, and let's see if we can yank it up from the inside. Mm, there we go. Hey, hey, not too bad if I say so myself. That's going to be gray. Um, we are going to need to do some work on the funnels, too. But we're going to have to uh, paint them first and then take the nippers to them to uh, make room for the metal bits in those. I love the Kistria. Way back in the day, Amazon was fire selling their gun fluff. Four MG campers for 11 bucks a piece, Shadowhawk? That's like, that's like, what? One for the box? Or one for the store, for storage, for resale. One to use. Uh, one to trade. And one for uh, kit bashes. <laughs> yeah, doing the, uh, doing the Dendrobium, or redoing that, rather, has really made me uh love the master grade uh size the one to 100 a lot more which is something that's uh fun fact not a one to 100 scale beast this is one to 144 believe it or not mm. Evil Dr. Reef says, can you imagine how the one year war had changed if they sent four campers instead of one in 080? True. Things might have been a little bit different. But I counter, what would happen if they instead took uh, two campers out of those four and attached them as legs to the to the uh, Zeon? Mm hmm? Legs wouldn't just be for show then. Oh, these arms. Um... I think we're doing right is stage right is work at home. Okay. Uh, so many good joints on these things. There. These ones are going to be interesting. Um, I think much like the uh, the other one, I think I'm going to be able to paint these in one go on their own without... Uh, Taking them apart, however, and now looking at the... Ooh. Let me have a look at what they look like, actually. And what the range of motion is. 
Nope, that's not the hole for it. Uh, I think I can get away with just painting them and not seam deleting them. That'll be okay on those. I think. I think. <laughs> so let's have that there. And I'm also going to open the window because it's getting quite warm in here. As it is wont to do on a Tinker Tailor uh, evening. Hey, uh, folks, that is actually taking us to the top of the hour. So I'm going to say that this is the time where I'll be there. Pause. Gather. This is the time when we will pause, regather. This is the time when we will be taking our first break. Please get up, stretch your legs, swap your fluids, uh, do some vocal exercises too. I'm going to be doing the same. And we'll be back with more Tinker Tailor Solder Fry in just a few minutes. Don't go all the way away. Folks, we're back with more Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry here on the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name is Ian Horner, and we are currently disassembling this gunpla in preparation for paint. Uh, looking through the chat here, Shadowhawk or Shadowhawk uh, broke down their fire sale from Toys R Us uh, gunpla history, and my God, three, four, like you, you're three campers, a GP02, a GP01 full Barnian. Uh, Easy Eight, uh, Jim, and a perfect grade Zaku. All, but all, all except for the Zaku and Master Grade. That is, oh, that is a haul and a half. Uh oh, a pinch temporarily came back. If it's still there, let me know. Uh, that said, that uh, perfect grade Zaku sitting on free BSD and Wing Commander Prophecy. That's that's how you get my attention. Uh, love that. Uh, excuse me. It seems that uh, by opening the window, I have uh, caused whatever is in the air to uh, invade my sinuses a little bit more than usual. So uh, if, I'm a, if I'm a little bit sniffly, uh, please... You know what? Just please ignore it. Ah, uh, let us continue with our uh, disassembly. I get the feeling, folks, uh, the way this is going right now, we're definitely on track for a good, uh, for, for, ugh, to lay down some paint today. So I was thinking to myself, hey, this seems like a, uh, a one to, uh, seam delete, and yet, seam is barely visible up in there. Uh, I'm just gonna give myself a bit of a easy time here. There we go. That I don't think this is going to be worth uh, de-seaming this part either, which I'm happy about because the less I have to de-seam, the better. It's not some. It was something I experimented with uh, back in the other one here, and in fact, it was actually the uh, the experiment was on the uh, bazooka barrel, and as you can see, it turned out really well here. You, you can't see the line at all. Uh, missed a spot there, it seems, but the rest of the body, not bad, not bad, and then yeah, missed some spots there. So living and learning, but uh, definitely like the effect that a good de-seam does. This, however, let's just very, very carefully pry this apart. Ooh, my thumb joints hurt. That's what you get for popping them so much in. And let's send some plastic through the middle there to just help it out along the way. Should make sure to uh, rest my elbows on the table more. That gets my gets what I'm working on in better view. Okay. <laughs> Popping your joints has been found to be beneficial overall. That's interesting, brownie points. I, I mean, I, it's one of those things that goes back and forth in the uh, in the news, like uh, red wine, coffee, etc. Okay, not bad. 
Not bad there at all. And then that just wiggles out like that. So I guess that means that the uh, <laughs> the, the uh, things I'm feeling in my joints are just the onset of old age. I'm not old yet, but I'm working on it. Speaking of which, whoa! Forgot my beverage over by the beverage dispenser. All right. Parts, 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 parts. Can't stop singing the Venus line. Uh, we'll get you in a second. Let's do the head. I don't think it's been 30 years that I've been cracking knuckles. I think it's only been 20 or less. Or just getting close to. It's a bad habit I picked up, I think, post-university, believe it or not. Okay, how does this disassemble? And does it disassemble safely? Ah, oh, yes, it does. Okay. Any of these pieces I that uh, clip into place, I absolutely detest. Because they are so easy to break if you're not careful. But this one, I think, okay, we'll just pull out like that. Just like that. And that piece, we're going to actually leave that connect well yeah we'll connect it there ah Whew. okay let's not hold too many pieces at once this is one piece this is one piece oh yeah okay this is absolutely getting a seam delete and there's a reason for it. It's this separation up here, which I'm not yet. You should be able to see it if I turn it there. Like that. Oh, this one's going to be tough, though. And the reason I say this is going to be tough is... I'm going to have to sand it once it's done, too. So that one... Yeah, we'll have to find a way to clamp that. Oh, God, yeah. Even pressuring here, you need to pressure right up against that. And uh, where's my clamps? So that's going to mean clamping it. Ugh! Ugh! Clamping it right at the end. Which is uh, not ideal. Yuck. Well, that's going to be uh, something for later us to deal with, I think. Um, and this bit, this bit comes apart how? I think we just shove. No. Let's have a look at the manual. We don't want to break anything. Sounding is the fun meditative part. I mean, true Nigoki, that's... I, I always think of sanding as the, uh... I think it comes from my old motorcycle restoration days. Um, back when I had the ability to do that. Uh, always thought of sanding as, like, a one-time thing. That you can only ever take things off. And so you gotta be careful with sanding. But when it comes to model building, you can very easily build back up with, uh... With putty and green glue if you need to. It's a lot, it's a lot more forgiving of a process. I need to kind of remember that. Ah, yes, here's all the stickers we didn't put in because we knew we might be doing something different with it. Right, that's not the head. That, that's the head. Okay, so that undergates it. Wow, those the head fins come off, apparently. Oh, yeah, I can see where they come off. Now yeah, that I can see it. I think we'll just do that all together because there's no reason not to. Um, okay. So that pops off the the little 
screeny thing, and then it's just the bottom bit, and the top pops onto it. So there are a couple of pieces here that come apart. Aha, there we go. Found it. And then we just kind of wiggle, 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 until it just loosens itself up. There we go. Safety. Yep, we're absolutely going to paint these separately as well. When I was uh, just looking at uh, some painting tutorials last night, as I am watched do on the internet, uh, not just painting, but other hobby-based, uh, right? Because this slides back and forth. It's super cool that way. I saw a gentleman who had made, uh, who had done up an... God, I almost forgot the name of this. Nightingale. But what they had done is sliced it in half and custom built a, an, out of sheets of styrene and, and hoses and parts, custom built a, uh, a cross section of it, and then built a uh, beautiful uh, little stand of wood for it that closed together with magnets so you could yank the whole thing apart with and look at the lit interior. It was gorgeous and absolutely beyond my ability at this current time. And possibly forever! We'll see how many of these things I actually get to in my life. Okay, now here is a fine example of some pieces that are going to get that good, good seam delete. See that line right down there? We're going to make that go away. And in fact, you know what? Let's do one of these right now, because uh, no time like the present. Let's push that aside. And let's get ourselves, uh, where did you go? Are you are. Ow. So let's get some Tamiya cement. Um, other, other styrene solvents are available. And uh, then we're just going to open this up a bit. And the, uh, the gray beards in the chat may be getting ready for some excitement because this used to be the way you built models. There was no snap apart, snap together. And I gotta say thank you to uh, Bandai for popularizing the snap fit uh, system. Because, boy do I love me some easy to construct. I, I love projects that you can take to any level of done this that you so choose okay i think this is about as apart as i want to get it maybe i can get a little farther but uh we don't want it to be too far because i don't want to have to uh handle the pieces separately and move things around too much as we as we put this back together, I kind of wanted to just slip into position, but I also want to get enough space there that I can safely get the brush in between. And this is also going to tell me if it's worth doing the other two tanks in this style. Look at me talking like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not even Loading Ready Run's model guy. Okay, that looks about good. So let's hold that down. Let's get out our cement. Ooh, must have left that cabin open for a while. Okay, and let's get to getting some in there oh boy okay this is one of those uh things that feels like it's a no way back once you once you do it so here we go Ooh. 
Okay, try not to paint anything onto the surface. Just keep it inside. Nice and careful. And you're only going to get through this once, Ian. So... D. Ah! Yeah, this is definitely going to need some sanding once we're done. Make sure I got enough on the end here. Okay. And then, I'm just going to take these and push them together. And then, we're going to use the clamps to... Push them together more. Keep them like that. And that should melt the two sides together. What I'm seeing, though, right away, is that we are going to need to come back and hit this with some putty later. Because, look at that, you can see a little bit of uh, an indentation where I think I got a little bit too uh, happy with the nippers there. So, there we go. Andreas Gustafsson asks, would the Lair model guy be Alex? I would put it on Cameron. He's uh, he's definitely got more experience uh, putting these things together than I ever would. So. I'm the newcomer, but I am enthusiastic, if nothing else. Brownie Points wants to know, just because I know you're another Star Wars nerd like me, apparently the head writer for upcoming Acolyte movie cut her teeth writing the Timothy Zahn era fan fiction and is diving into the tabletops, especially the WEGD6 for bits that make me excited. That's really cool. I, it's one, what I like most about, uh, about the anime industry as it stands right now is how many of the, uh, the current cream of the crop directors and producers are, were just unabashed otaku during the eighties and early nineties and just, eventually made their way or forced their way into uh into the industry god what was it uh wasn't it tano i was forget why can i never remember the guy's name uh, he was a late comer to gynex but he uh because he, he didn't go to uni the University of uh, Osaka like the rest of them. But what happened is he just showed up one day as a ca uh, because they had a casting call for uh, one, of the, one of their uh, productions. I think it was for science fiction. And he just never left. What's it? <laughs> kind of love that stuff. Uh, okay. Thanks for later uh, and for memories. Let's get the torso going here. Yeah, the torso is when you realize that, yes, we have a lot more um, gray parts than you think you do. This, you know what? I think, I think I'm going to need another one of those, uh, another one of those uh, trays. Uh, Distrusting Spectator asks at Loading Ready Run, by which I assume you mean me, you went to Uvic, right? The answer to that is a resounding no. I am one of the Loading Ready Run uh, imports from Alberta. I went to school in Edmonton, uh, University of Alberta, psychology degree, uh, with, uh, with Beige, though he didn't take psychology. Uh, he was in business information, but you'll talk the beige about that. Okay, third tray is now for parts that are, I'm going to push that fan box to the left, parts that are singular, that don't have a pair uh, or a partner of some sort, or at least are oddly numbered. So we'll put the other tanks in there too. Uh, and I'm gonna put the head pieces in there as well. 
Okay, uh, this piece. Disassemble it thusly. Ooh, it's a... Uh, Okay, very carefully remove that. It's one more for the part here. Those are the best kitchen towels in the market, hands down, says Disgusting Spectator. They were uh, definitely the ones that I picked on Amazon, on the local, I'm sorry, the, the Washington Delivery Company, uh, other delivery services and sales places are available but i like them and i like them enough that i'm willing to uh i use them hard so i'm feeling like i'm ready i'm not treating them as precious these will probably in a year or two all get replaced with a fresh batch but they're great Absolutely great. Why are we disassembling Gundam Atom Bomb S? Because we're going to paint this sucker. And it's a lot easier to paint parts than it is to try and mask things off. Um, but you want to be able to assemble it first to see how things are going to... Uh, how things come together, what actually needs to be painted and what, what doesn't. Uh, and this absolutely... It's got so much uh, showing stuff here, including these hoses, which I think we will be deleting in favor of uh, of metallic hoses. But that will be a, a exercise for later Ian and later viewers, because we're doing this whole thing on stream. I decided that it was an ill-advised decision, but I did decide to do it, and I did say it out loud, so... I'm not about to make a liar out of myself. That's for the media to do. Okay. There we go. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Come on. Open your beak. Reveal your secrets to me. Secrets suck. This is a uh, part of a headpiece, so that'll go there. Well, that's what attaches the head. Yeah, see, I'm, I'd much rather uh, paint these separately than I would try to mask that off and then paint it and then reverse mask and paint the other way. <laughs> Plus, it means I get to build the thing again, which is nice. Or at least I find fun. Okay. And so that's, this is what I'm talking about when deciding what stuff needs painting. So when I do end up painting this piece here, uh, all these little bits are just going to get a little on the side, on the top here. These might, I mean, even actually, uh, throw down in silver because I don't think that the uh, I don't think that the etched parts uh, cover those I'll have to check what the etched parts actually do cover before doing too much in terms of painting because I don't want to duplicate effort but I do want to get this piece off without snapping anything and that's proving to be a bit of a B let's uh, just play with the wiggle uh, option. Nice thing is if we cause any stress marks in plastic, the paint will hide it. That was my favorite part about uh, working with the, the GP03, was getting to go in after taking it apart and, you know, I, I used the cheapest dollar store nippers, diamond edged nippers that I could get at the time. So every piece of that machine was just riddled with terrible marks. And uh, getting into, uh, being able to get in there and uh, file them down with a, an emery board was so satisfying and resulted in some much, much nicer lines there. Dude, we Ooh, says, Ian, how big is your gunpla 
collection, I collect the Master Grades, and I've around 40. Haven't painted any of them since I paint D&D minis to scratch that itch. Uh, so what do we got here for Gunpla? Right now, Gunpla-wise, in terms of things that I own, it's the GP03, the Nightingale. Uh, there is still in the box, but not... I mean, we're going to disassemble and paint it as well. The 7-Eleven uh, uh, Gundam collaboration. Um, I guess technically the cup noodle counts as Gunpla. And the, uh, the Gunpla injection system model technically also counts as Gunpla. Um, I also have one machine Krieger uh, diver suit uh, still in the backlog. Um, and a bear guy I think I got for Corey. I think that's it at the moment. I'm trying to uh, to, to keep the the number low because of uh, you know space and, and money and time and just collect and you know trying to collect suits that I really like. Um, in terms of suits that I'm looking at right now, um, the uh, I don't think it's a master grade unless I'm wrong. There might be a master grade Zeta coming. There is that Master Grade Full Armored Double Zeta, which I'm absolutely going to be uh, picking up, if not a couple sets for that, because I would love to do a condo version with the super thick thighs. Uh, and I'm kind of kind of tempted to pick up one of the Master Grade uh, Rick Doms. But having now uh, built a couple models, I am definitely uh, a fan of the 1 to 100 scale. I think it just uh, it, it makes for a nicer robot, and it's a little bit larger. And for the painting that I like to do, especially the finishing I like to do with the, the, the decals and the paint, um, having a larger area to work with is definitely a boni. How does this work? Ah, like that, apparently. Discordant, uh, or distrusting spectator, that's, I, I feel very much the same way. I don't want, you know, to have all of my shelves covered in, in Gunpla. Um, that said, which, which is why I'm trying to focus on, you know, the ones that I really, really like. That said, uh, at least I find once you've given them a paint job, that really makes a difference in terms of whether, in my mind, uh, they look good being displayed. I don't, I'm not a fan of the bare plastic. Just that's, that's, that's all there is to it. Um, does that mean my, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm uh, more or less uh, a fan of the hobby, but yeah, I think there must be other people. Well, there are, I don't know anyone out there who just wants to look at gun, at finished Gunpla. Uh, it's kind of what the Gundam Fix Figuration sets and the Robot Damashis are for. And I've got a couple of Fix Figurations. The, uh, <laughs> strangely enough, the GP03 Dendrobium uh, with the Dendrobium uh, and the Zeta. And I like them. But lately I've been looking at the... Uh, the fixed figuration of the GP03 is different enough because it it's more of just a backpack. I'm happier with, with uh, keeping that on display. But honestly, I think if I actually end up uh, getting, building, and painting uh, a Master Grade Zeta, then I will probably dispose of the fixed figuration. So hoses, 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 hoses. Yeah, there are some places, there are some people who do buy the models, but it's not a big, uh, a big group. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is what I wanted to know. It's a perfect fit and it goes straight up. So what I need to do is push it straight out. Uh, let's use what's the best option tool for that right now. Let's use the blunt end of these tweezers. E. This is one of those click fit pieces that's 
I think not ah whew, not meant to be removed. But uh, there we go. We were able to do so with little to no damage. And those pieces will also be painted. Um, this piece just cuts up like that. And I think I got a toothpick. Actually, wait. Yeah, toothpick should be good for poking those little stubbies out. Okay. Little guns. You're going to get painted too. Distrust. Yeah. Distrusting spectators tonight's beer is category 12's North Northwestern IPA. Yes. <laughs> and it is multi and delicious. And uh, we've had it for a couple weeks now. That off, this off. I'm gonna throw uh, this one on here and this one on there. This is absolutely ridiculous, is what this is. But this is a core block that I think we're just going to leave as is, and uh, we'll get the. Yeah, I think this is safe to just keep as one piece, and then we can uh, paint it all together. And as long as we, uh, like I said, take out these polycaps. Um, that's not even a polycap. It's just a, uh, a wing adapter or a joint adapter. But as long as we cover over these sections that... Uh, shouldn't be filled with paint, will be fine. But that can be one piece. A Luffy style. Okay, side wing. This is going to be, uh, we're going to be chopping these off in the future sometime. Digimon's got at least 10 assembled but unpainted models shown in their boxes in the basement because of nowhere good to display them. Uh, yep. <laughs> I know that feel. That's, uh, that's, that's where my uniform ladies have been sitting for the past... God, is it 2014? 12... 8. 8 years. <laughs> the last 8 years since, uh, since moving to Victoria. And they've only recently come back on display. Thrusters, side skirt wing. Just uh, leave those assembled on that side. Uh, let's go with the front skirt armor. That just pops off too, right on both sides. I remember how these went together. Some of these pieces are going to need that. That feels smoother. Let's do the same thing with that mark there. Feels almost perfect. There we go. And that's nice and cleaned up for the paint job. Let's now take it apart. And let's leave that other side for further disassembly. Ah. I'm also now questioning some life choices I'm about to make when it comes to how we want to take this or how we want to paint this because no I think I can keep a consistent color that was one of the hardest parts about the uh, the GP03 was 
or what I thought was going to be a hard part, but it turned out to not be as bad as I thought it was because of the addition of the magic of big bottles. I managed to mix together just about enough paint of the various colors that were necessary and keep them in some Tamiya bottles, which I love, by the way. Need to get Ian a stocking stuffer? Just get some of those uh, unfilled Tamiya bottles of various sizes. Aha! These white pieces come out as well. Might come out easier on their own. Yes, they do. Great. Okay, first they come out. They're what holds the thing together. I forgot about that. Okay, and then this one just pops out from behind. Perfect. This piece also needs a little Gentle persuasion from the bottom. <laughs> bottom persuasion. Those will probably get their own special uh, painting time. Now comes the difficult portion. Providing... Okay, okay, so uh, when I said difficult, I mean just F and easy. Just do it. Why not just separate the parts? This one's going to be an interesting one because we're going to have to hit the uh, there, there, and there with the paint. Uh, and that side with the paint, but the rest of it, leave it alone. Okay, we're making good progress here, folks. I feel like we might even be able to uh, lay down some paint tonight. Um, let's see about getting this off. Done. <laughs> Alright, I think this is going to be uh, something I that might end up being its own separate special paint time discussion, so we'll put that and leave that on the, uh, the singulars tray. Uh, remove that. That goes on homework tray. Yeah! This goes on the, uh, the other tray too. Um, boy, this is an easy one. Singular tray, but let's, let's do some disassembly, because it's easy. That part's out. What are you wedged on? Aha! There we go. Whoop! These parts can also, again, be probably co-painted. No need for seam delete. I am going to take some time to try and remove more of these marks, even from the hidden spaces. I didn't do that on the, uh, the dendro. And, uh, it suffered for it. Everything's going to get coated in primer at the very least. All right. There we go. Uh, and the... Uh... The member. I can't come up with a better word for it. Oh, yep. I'm going to need to uh, clean up some lines here. Of course, the final uh, stages of, of weathering and... Uh, such are absolutely going to hide a lot of the flaws that we find and deal with. Ooh, this is the worst piece. 
right here. Uh. Okay, how are we going to want to do this? Because this does not want to come apart easily. And I'm very, very hesitant to jam things because it feels it feels solid and i know that it is solid because i made it okay there we go oh good phew and get some leverage under there hey there we go Whew. i was worried for nothing let's Eee, that's a sound I don't like to hear, but it turns out it was okay. That sound doesn't always make things okay, though. Mm, come on, wiggle it out. Oh, phew. No broken pins. Got there. Got there. And that comes out like that, and we can, of course, we'll do our couple points there Let's do extract and finally the leg I remember the first time we put together one of these bad boys love the articulation on it too mm -hmm. and if I were a modding man which I'm not yet then I'd probably end up extending that toe by another you inches again just for the mech ridiculousness okay, that comes off the bottom nice and easy this comes off he said pulling hoping it may be not coming off okay you know what it's not coming off by itself that's okay we'll just disassemble around it The power of the fingernail getting into those cracks. My keratin is soft. It does not damage the the plastic, the styrene. Okay. That seems a little bit better than it was. Oh, there we go. That's the way we want it. That should do. Okay. And then this one comes out like this. <laughs> Theoretically. Whew. Guess got to move the... Move the plastic in the appropriate direction. This is absolutely going to get a, uh, a coating, but again, we're going to want to. Uh... Wait, we want to separate that. I think the answer is no. We're not going to separate that. We'll just again get some tape in there on the various sides, especially around there, and that'll be okay. And then we've got this, this bit here. Now let's get these thrusters out first. I don't think they're structural. And uh, then Think we separate this? Yep. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, that's one side and then the other. Nice big skirts there. Ah, right. And then this, yep, 
pops out neatly like so. This part pulls off without any problem. I'm glad I've got the two things to compare because I think we can get away with just painting the underside and the back on this. And then we can also uh, mask and separate that on its own. Or do we want to take it? Let's take it apart. Let's make this easier on ourselves. No parts, no painting parts with two colors at the same time. Which is verboten. Okay, let's get that out there. Come on. Continue to disassemble yourself. I mean, you're not auto-disassembling. I'm doing this. And that's out. Good. Wiggle, wiggle. Yellow middle. I love you, egg. Okay. There's some more white fabric. Fabric. Gray to slay. And now finally showing feet once again. Push out from the inside. Everything works. That comes out. Come on. Okay, we need to slowly lift the back a bit. Oh, Ian, you're very close to ending this stage, so don't get ahead of yourself. Very slowly, just lift the parts. Do not bend. Try to avoid bending as much as... Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. The... <laughs> the clench is real, let me tell you folks, sometimes. These pieces seem like they're a little bit more easy to get out and going to be less worried if we snap a peg down here oh boy you're in there tight aren't you where are you connected up front or are you connected up front you might be how do i get that portion of you up. Is it just a wiggling? It might just be wiggling. Or it might be best that we actually get some leverage in here. Let's use these tweezers. Push them in such a way that we don't damage anything. But we can get to the back. Aha! There we go. Maybe. What do these pieces look like underneath? Okay, so there's a big thick boy right in the front as well that's where we're having our troubles and it don't want to let go um okay there we go we just had to 
give it the force in the right way. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying uh, stress marks. They definitely made some boo-boo there. But that's okay. We are going to, uh, we're going to paint over that. No one, no one will ever know. Runabout, etc. Let's hope we can do the same thing with this one. This time with a little bit less issue. Now this one I could absolutely mask without too much effort, but just don't want to. Just don't want to. Just innocent mobile sets. I think we just about got this one. Just need to add a bit more pressure. It's a tight little feet. They worry me so. Ah, there we go. Whew. And there we go, that's two down. Uh, gray there. All right, last one. Oh, well that's splendid. Absolutely splendid. Easy peasy. Okay. That's left us with a bunch of parts here. A whole bunch of parts. Okay, that's not too difficult. I was wondering where I where I would actually do the uh, the grasp the grasping of uh, this. Um. All right. Well, we're on the right path. I've got an idea. And this will actually allow us to do this both sides at once and test the color that I would like to do. We're going to, uh, we're going to just do funnels for now. And we'll see how many others we can get on there, but uh, let's get some of these things on sticks such that we can uh, get to painting in just a second. Oh, that's right. It is in fact the top of the hour, Julia Mon, which means it's time for us to take our next break. So, like a good Tinker Tailor Solar Fry Watcher, you should get up, swap your fluids, stretch your legs, do what you need to do, and we'll be back for more Gunpla action in just a few minutes. Don't go all the way away. Folks, we are back with more Tinker Tailor Solder Fry here on the Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name is Ian Horner. Guess who forgot to uh, fill up his beverage again because he's uh, bad at breaks. And mainly because I had to spend some time putting some stuff away to make room to uh, engage the fume hood. It's not a fume hood. It's a, it is a particulate collector, a filter at best, and a, uh, a capture point at worst. But... We are still working on our... Oh. Nightingale Gunpla paint job. And uh, it's time to get some things onto uh, alligator clips. So let's, uh, let's start clipping up. Getting ready for the big... The big prime. 
So like I said, we're gonna we're gonna focus on uh, these pieces here more than anything else, um, and maybe a couple other pieces so that we can actually get an idea of what she looks like when we get some paint on her. But we're gonna start with uh, these pieces because they are the smallest and can be repainted if necessary. It's a good, satisfying beer. All right, that's that. Uh, is there anything else we want to do while we're here? You know, because we're having fun, shall we, uh, shall we do a big piece, too? Uh, the side, let's do the side skirt. Why not? Um, so, this is where things get fun. Um, I could just jam this on the end of a, uh, of a bamboo skewer, skewer here in one of these holes. And you know what? I think I will. <laughs> that works out just perfectly. Uh, so that should give us a good start here in terms of uh, what we're working on. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like this is enough to start with and then we can very easily see from here uh, if we need to make any changes to the way systems are working. So let's uh, stick the rest of these on top of the computer on the other side. Uh, where is my cat hand? Actually, first of all, we're going to need to actually move the uh, move the spray booth into position, and also ow, and also plug it in. Give me one moment here as we as I maneuver some wires. Uh, the kitchen table is not necessarily set up to be this modular. Uh, you're going to go on a journey with me, folks. Okay. And welcome to the spray booth. Let's get another uh, camera in there. Or another light so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Mm. And where is my... Airbrush, there you are. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to actually readjust this camera as well. So you can come with me on the whole journey. There you go. So I'll be right here, and then I'll need to... Urgh. Pull some things around. I need my brown and my red because I believe those. Well, we're not going to need them just yet because we're just going to be working on primer to start with. So let's get to uh, shaking up the primer. I think maybe down here is probably the closer our. Yes, Badger Airbrush, purchased secondhand, and it's been uh, working really well for me. I'm going to get a piece of paper towel, because you always need a piece of paper towel, not more than one. And anything else that I need off the top of my head, oh, we're going to need our... Airbrush pot. Not sure if that's showing up in camera. It is not. There it is now. Uh, like I said, we are going to need the paper towel. CAK host mask absolutely is going to be happening here too. I'm just going to yank the monitor a bit more so that I can actually see y'all here while I'm working on this. Yep. There it is. The last two things I think I need so far. Looking in my bin here. Uh, that's... Ooh, you know what? 
Now seems like a good time for us to try that out. Because it's a Let's Try program, right? Right, let's do it. Okay, Mr. Cat Hand, Mr. Neko Note, for the, uh, the holding of the done pieces. Uh, paper towel for wiping things down on. Uh, so yeah, we got the badger, but uh, I'm not going to use that to start with here, because I want to see what the performance is like on uh, this terrible... Oops. Oh no. Did I... Yeah, I tighten that beyond... And tightening. Oh no, there it is. Good. Whew. This is the first uh, airbrush I picked up, and it was uh, it's technically a makeup airbrush. But I used it to do all the work I did on the hammerhead. And it turned out pretty good for that. So I'm just curious to see how it's going to fare when it comes to uh, priming things. So let's get our mask on. Let's take a final sip of beer here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Get the... Uh... It's gone. Let's turn the fan on as well. I need to make sure that that gets all sent into the filter. All right, there we go. Hold up. Oh yeah, it's absolutely a. Uh... Oh good. Oh, it sounds like my uh, microphone is being picked up just fine here. Yeah, it's absolutely a generic uh, brandless airbrush, but it does put out a good amount of uh, force. So that's something. Let's spin off that cap and uh, got the trusty dusty tester here. The old spoon. That'll. We'll be using that every step of the way, actually, to make sure that it's uh, everything's adhering properly and looking the way we want it to, color-wise. Uh, Cam Lion asks, "What mask is this? This is your uh, your budget basement 3M silicone respirator." You know, he has uh, correctly identified the N95 filters as well. It'll stop painting, it'll stop COVID, and it makes me happy when that is a current. Ah, da, 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 primer. Anything I need to know? This is my first time using this primer as is itself. Um, don't know if we need to thin it or not, so let's not. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. That's just so I can keep track if I need to uh, add anything to it. Thin it out, but uh, we'll find out in just a second. Air is on, and uh, oh, right. I usually where is it? Have you seen a paper bag around here? This? Yes, that's it. I'd forgotten one of the last steps that I use, and it's there's no reason to use it. I just like having a uh, a little bit of paper down here to actually uh, use a sort of medium. Very quickly, I was going to check if there is a spray. And indeed, there is. So let's see how that works. Huh. It's definitely applying. Oh. <laughs> I forgot. The one big uh, difference between this airbrush and the Badger is that this is a single action, which means that uh, it doesn't push down to add air. The air is constantly blowing out. So, uh, and if there's any sort of a leak, obviously you're going to get a little bit of, uh, of the primer coming out. So 
to control the paint, you just pull back on that. Most airbrushes are double action, meaning that you control the air coming out. It's not a uh, controllable control, it's not analog, but you push down to get air and then pull back to get, uh, to get paint. This one, air is all the time, and just pull back to get paint. It does mean it's one less thing to worry about, but it's nice to have the control. So it's, you know, that's just very gentle. This is now full blast. And you know what? I'm actually... This is going on real thick. I can't say I'm a fan of this for, applica for applicating to the airbrush. Um, you know what? Let's add a few drops of thinner and see if that uh, if that fixes the issue with the, the application. We'll do it on the other side of the spoon. And if we don't like that, then we'll try it in the badger. Uh, where are my makeup frying? Whoopsie! So, we're going to add a few drops of the airbrush thinner. And uh, let's go with a... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Seems like a good start. Turn on the power, and let's just add that. Pull back on the needle, and that'll mix it up a bit. There we go. Let's see how that does on the other side. It's still thick as hell. It's still spattery. I don't know, folks. I think this airbrush might not even be good for the... Uh, for priming. Which is fun. It was a test airbrush, and uh, honestly, what I wanted it for was this little thing here that can provide some some portable uh, air. But uh, yeah, I'm going to call that not great. Let's take that same amount that we've got in there. Let's bust out the, the badger. Oops, it's not open that yet. So this should allow us to, at the very least, um, get some more pressure behind it. I, I still don't know what the pressure is outputting uh, from this this little thing, but it does seem to be okay with properly thin paints in other situations. Wow. Wound that air hose such that it did not like that. Where did I put my... There it is. On the ground. Okay. Let's get the... You be a jitter out. You cap it. And uh to the the one thing I'm not a fan of with badgers is that they use these very small uh threaded connectors. Sorry? No, I am good at the moment. Um, what do I need? I need something here. Ah, an extra spoon. There we go. Look, the, the dollar store did not have spoons only, so I bought mixed cutlery. I'll eventually get this, uh, eventually I guess I'll be painting forks too. All right, let's uh, let's get some, uh, get the rest of that primer into the badger. Whoop. That did not add much, but that's okay. You don't need much. 
Let's turn on the air. I don't know, what are we thinking here, chat? 20 PSI? 20 PSI seems good for this particular primer. I think it's actually not looking too bad. It's very textured. But, uh, let's see how this does. Okay, 20 seems high. So I'm going to cut that down a bit. Oh no, my handy dandy tool for adjusting air pressure. That handy dandy tool being. Uh, ah! These. Back night streams, we are currently painting with uh, Vallejo uh, primer. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't know where the bottle went. Here we are, surface primer. Uh, currently thinned a bit, but not extensively. Turn that down. Uh, where are we at here? Okay, now we're looking at about 15. This is generally where we want our brush to be at these days. Oh yeah, that's much nicer. Much more even controllable coverage. Oh, look at that. So, I mean, this is primer, so we're just going to want to coat it anyway, but we don't need to coat it more than we need to. Fun fact! On the GP03, Dendrobium, that was uh, completely unprimed, and I would not recommend that. I think the priming is definitely a uh, worthwhile thing. Okay. I pretty much emptied that. Hold on a sec. I'm just going to put some cleaning fluid into there. Just keep it nice and lubed up. I absolutely need to make more cleaning fluid. Okay. Run that through. There we go. Cleaning fluid stays with me. All righty then. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at these two different jobs. And you can already tell a difference. Let me see if I'm on camera here. Yeah, look at the difference in the, uh, the levels of matteness of the, uh, of the primer. This is the, the cheap airbrush, and it is definitely thick and still tacky. This one, I'm pretty sure it's getting close to dry, but you can see that it is definitely uh, a smoother finish. I think either would probably work, but I do like the consistency of the badger more. So I guess let's, uh, let's load it up with some more primer. Let's see what it does to one of these funnels, shall we? Remove uh, the rest of the excess. Okay, and let's add another ten drops, shall we? Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you know what? Let's add. Five drops of the airbrush yeah, thinner. Quarter up there. Give it a little mix. Oh, yep, that's that's ready. Check it. Yep, that's coming out fine. All right. Now, the nice thing about going with a black uh, primer like this is this is going to make my uh, my steps... Or it's going to cut down one step of the, uh, the painting process. 
which is laying down that black undercoat to provide uh, shading with. That's looking nice, and uh, I mean, I should probably, yeah, cover it up all the bits, just because I know that I might end up displaying this with a, uh, a funnel kit to make the funnels mobile. Okay, not bad. What do you think, Jeff? Like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, put that down. So the one problem with this brush um, is that <laughs> it, you'll note that the reservoir is extremely small. And I'm uh, starting to get to the point where I might actually want a uh, second brush, something a little bit larger. That said, I'm extremely, uh, extremely happy with this particular airbrush and it's fine uh fine fine fills. it is i definitely have the fine point two or point i think it's the point two needle kit in here point two millimeters it means if you can get your paint really thin and you can get really close to that model, you can get some extremely small dots in. And I'm still learning myself, but uh, we're getting there. We're learning. Naive question the Maricat has. I assume after using these elevated clamps to hold something to paint, when they get primed themselves, we just dip them in paint thinner to clean them off or leave them primed. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, America, some of these ones are, uh, there's no cleaning involved at all. They get just coated with, with whatever paint I'm putting on them. You can see uh, one of, this one's red, this one's got black on the other side, this one is blue all the way down with a little bit of white. Now, these are just... Uh, the cheapest I could find from the Washington Delivery Company. And honestly, I found that a lot of the stuff that the Washington Delivery Company sells me, I can get for about the same price or less sometimes from the local hobby shop. So uh, support the local hobby shop. Like I am want to and I'm going to continue to do more. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's, we got some very nice looking things going on here, Chad. We're going to finish these uh, today. Or at least going to prime this area. <laughs> I need to find a way to get you into the booth with me here rather than peeking around the corner like this. I think I've uh, hit the stage with this one where I ended up uh, just putting way too much thinner on and not enough not enough primer. You know what? I'm just going to leave that one to prime again later. And this time I'm just going to add the primer directly. No, uh, no thinner. Let's see how that goes this time. And, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So twenty is about where we can fit without, uh, if we were to add anything to it. Uh, I have a feeling there's going to be no problem getting this out the end. Oh yeah, <laughs> thinner. Never heard of her. Get straight on there. Even little coats. And I believe if I am 
I'm not mistaken, your uncle's name is Bob. Oh. How many more of these do we have? Bring them in here. So I'll admit that my airbrush technique still probably needs a lot of work. We want to maintain a uh, consistent distance from the airbrush to the surface as you are adding paint. And as you can see, a lot of the times I'm still doing that, which is, it moves paint around, but it doesn't make things even in the slightest. <laughs> Rob, thank you for the compliment. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Even if my voice is coming through a, uh, a mask of extreme safety. The one thing I don't like about airbrush and primer is that it, uh, because it is primer, it likes to stick to things a bit more than paint does, and it makes your, uh, your cleanup of your airbrush a little bit more dire. Oh my lord. Okay, look at that. That was the last one we painted, and it's almost already uh, flashed to the point where we could... Put another coat of actual red on top of that. That's amazing. That's lovely. This is the one we uh, had too much uh, thinner in. I'm going to give it a few minutes here to uh, I'm gonna blast off some of the edges. Yeah, this is ruining it. Thank goodness for primer. Uh, we'll give that another leveling, another coat in just a second. <laughs> Dang. Ruin that. Maybe if I start up here this time. Okay, and then go over here. And it's about half trigger, by the way, for those of you who are wondering. I don't think I've ever gone full bore on this airbrush and been happy with the results. You can get some very thin lines, or you can get big pots. That's sort of the, uh, that's your range, depending on the trigger discipline. What I absolutely need to get myself is a set or a nice box of nitrile gloves. But I'm waiting to uh, get my car back to the shop for that. Because my good source, well, Princess Otto, you all know and love her, is way out in the Langford. And uh, while I'm occasionally willing to bus out to DC Shaver, downtown to Langford's a bit of a hike. I'd say that one's done too. Which means we are coming up to the last piece that we have here. Pop that off. Whew. We know a German princess? Yes, we do. She's best friends with Beach. Oh, and hey, Milky Shame. I hope the uh, I hope the build goes well for you. It's a it's a great kit. Love it. Love the way it looks. Can't wait to uh, make it pop a little more. Let's have a look, go back and have a look at these. Interesting. Right, I did mix up the dip in the sides. So I went down further. So this is the, uh, let's see if we can see the difference here. Look at the texture and the spoon on the left compared to the spoon on the right. And the difference in the, uh, the set. Well, first of all, this one's still tacky. This one's dry to the touch. You can see there's more spatter and, uh, and texture there than there is on this side. That said, I'm not averse to texture. 
in my models, but uh, not necessarily at the primer stage. Okay. Let's get the uh, our mask back up. Mask on. Um, I'm going to wait a little longer on this just to give it some time. But let's see what it's like if we prime a big wing piece. All the sides. Sides are always my bane, but just gotta be careful with them. I like the airbrush because you can build up slowly but surely until you get to the point where you've got enough coverage, but you're not uh, you're not flooding the thing on the back side too. Because why not? Got lots of markings. You don't need to worry so much about filling the holes because those are going to get filled by uh, plastic itself. But I need to work on the lighting switch in here too. Well, you know what? Um. Effort, yeah. Let's. Jeez. We got lots of room still on the cat hand, so let's uh, let's move some stuff around and get some more things on here, shall we? So I don't know if we're painting anything red tonight. That's. Uh, I think that's going to be an exercise for next time, which means I'm going to need to prime everything. Uh, before the next episode, so we can get into the paint there. Good, let's uh, grab some more pieces from the bin, get them on sticks, and uh, put them away. Got 20 minutes left here in the show, right? Not. <laughs> Iris, this is actually a purpose built uh, hobby equipment uh, thing called the Mr. Neko Note, or Mr. Neko Note, if you're English. Nekonote, for those not speaking Japanese, uh, Mr. Cat's Hand. Uh, they also make larger versions. I can't remember what the next steps are, but I know that the big one that they have is called uh, the Mr. Tiger Hand. Uh, or Tiger God, I think. It's, uh, it's, it's the big one. But yeah, it's just a... Uh, it's basically a cat scratch toy. It's this car uh, corrugated cardboard glued together and then... Uh, Cut flat and then stuck up. I was at the dollar store today to pick up some other stuff, and I almost bought a uh, an actual c cat scratch uh, toy, but uh, didn't have the cardboard edges on it that I like. I don't know. Maybe I'll just make my own for that. But it's a uh, exercise for next time. There they are. I was wondering where my little alligator clip hands were. So I used to be all about uh, putting them on the the station and then taking them off and then yeah putting them on the station taking them off painting putting them back on the station now it's just a case of I'll just lay them flat parts flat out here and uh <laughs> and uh then when I'm done painting them stick them in the uh in the tay Iris says it's a, it's really a question whether the hobby markup or pet markup is higher. Absolutely, in this case, hobby markup is higher, but that's simply because it's a, uh, it was a dollar store. 
So it was selling for $3 because, you know, it's a dollar store. 2022. And nothing's okay anymore. All right, let's get some big pieces on there. Get this, uh, get this party started. One of the things I love about priming pieces, too, is that you get to see detail in a way that you don't normally get to That's because it's hidden by the sheen or hidden by the color. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like turning off or turning on uh, black and white or grayscale mode on your computer. Fun fact, if you're a designer uh, and, and working on anything, uh, make a hotkey if you're on a Mac to uh, change assistive devices modes to enable grayscale or low contrast mode. And it's a really easy way to uh, just like flash back and forth between like, is this, uh, does this look right? Or is this accessible with enough contrast? It's, it's, it's just handy. I think we've got, you know what? Let's just see how many pieces we can get on here. And then maybe we'll, and then we'll stop once we've got a full tray. How does that sound, folks? Okay, there we go. I guess I should be showing how uh, how I'm clipping these on here. I'm trying to find a point where it is absolutely not being shown to the outside world. I did find uh, when I was... Oh, this is going to be a tough one because pretty much everything here is exposed. So what I might do for this is jam, no, jam, no. Yeah, you know what I'll have to do is, for priming, just going to grip here. And uh, then we'll have to uh, hope for the best. Please... <laughs> mm, Here's an interesting one. You can see the uh, red, and then the white, and then the red at the end there. I can't remember what I was painting that caused that, but uh, you get some interesting styrations. Yes, Nikoki, you are correct. I'll uh, be showing the detail thanks to the primer. Surfacing agents are also surfacing agents are also available. Okay, you know what? Aside from the Giganto binder, I'm going to say that we're just going to finish these red parts, or finish as many of these red parts as we can. And we'll leave the rest for either next time or only here. Let's get to... Uh... Hmm... It's going back to Americat's link there. Uh, oh, yes, there's the Neconote station. Wow, that's half what I paid for it. <laughs> okay, let's get on there. <laughs> Exo Guild, I'll give you the pass on the... Uh, on your... Counting catchphrases because it's one of mine. Okay, so let's keep all the parts over there. Move a small T thing full of stuff over there. Oh, let's fill up our paint. Because we got a number to do. Painting. It feels like it's going to be a cheap hobby. What? It's only like five bucks per bottle of paint, right? Right? And how many? How many do you need? Certainly not all of them. Well, that would be ridiculous. Okay, let's. Uh, flow is good. Batter is fantastic. Lay down some color. Mm. 
By the way, if you're wondering why I have some bamboo skewers, it's because the 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 cat hand station came with four bamboo skewers with alligator clips. And uh, I needed more, so I just ended up using straight uh, bamboo skewers, having the either the pointy end or the blunt end uh, into holes as necessary. And like it eventually got to the point where I was <laughs> I was running out of uh, things to paint because I didn't have sticks for them. I'm like this is extremely inefficient. I need more sticks. So if uh, if I were to give any painting or airbrushing advice to the new hobbyist, it would be buy more alligator clip sticks than you think you need. Okay, so that was our uh, our over prime with or, or our over thinned one last time. And it's looking much better now. Oh, so glad that I tested this out with a mask today. This is going so well. Absolutely, we will be doing more painting streams in the future. I mean, not just because... <laughs> not just because I have signed myself up to... A forever hell that is this particular build. One thing you got to worry about, and you can see it happening here a bit. Can you? Anything? Sometimes it gets some spatter if your uh, if your brushes start to load up. Um, and there's really nothing you, at least that I know you can do about that other than. Adding more flow, converter, blasting that brush out. At this point, it's not too much of an issue because we are in a priming, so we don't need to worry about gradients too much. But oh my god, look at that. Yeah, if we were, uh, ugh, ugh. If you were painting, I would not be pleased with these current results. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of spatter actually. What's going on here, my dude? Hmm. Who knows? Fewer random movements, more smooth application. These larger pieces require a lot more primer. Okay, because this is the foot, we need to we need to make sure to get the bottom edge too, remember. Might also be the needles getting a bit dirty, so or bogged down. Again, we are using extremely fine needles, so that definitely adds to the uh, the possibility of loading up that brush head. But I think that's a state that I'm happy with. These these droplets should dry themselves out, but we'll see. Whew. Okay, let's put that down and on to the next. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Give us a little clean here. Soaks up any of the errant primer. All right. There we go. The other thing that can cause issues with uh, with your paint is, uh, at least in my case, 
is potential freezing of the tip. Now, I don't think that that's ever been an issue for me, again, because I don't use... Well, let's take a couple steps back here. So, when you're getting into airbrushing, a lot of people like to go the route of buying a compressor, because it's a one-time purchase, it's cheap, it makes sense, it's what everyone else uses, right? But you could be like me and uh, use CO2. CO2 is a readily available gas in most cities, uh, from welding shops or uh, fire extinguisher rechargers, as it is here in our city. But what it means is that you get a consistent flow of gas, and you get no sputs and starts that you get from a, uh, or that you can get from a compressor. It's also much quieter because you're just getting gas out of it. Uh, and CO2 is not a, uh, there's a lot of it in the air, as long as you have windows, you know, a window open cracked somewhere in your house, you're not going to have a problem with that with getting too much CO2 into your lungs. Um, the one issue is that you could end up, possibly, depending on flow rate, pressure, uh, freezing up your, uh, your tip, which can cause the spatters. A way to get around that is uh, if you don't want to... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Iris has it. <laughs> Air gets cold as it expands from a compressed state, but if you, as long as you make sure that the CO2 tank that you have doesn't have a dip tube and isn't supplying liquid uh, carbon dioxide directly to the tip, the point where the expansion happens, then you're probably okay. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can go with nitrogen, which is uh, not what I did. The reason I want CO2 is because I had an extra CO2 tank. But if you're just getting started, nitrogen, I think, might be the way to go, as it is a uh, it is also an inert gas found in the uh, in the atmosphere in large amounts, uh, and it doesn't quite have as much of the uh, cold compression problem that CO2 does. But yeah, Ian's top tip, absolutely use gas as opposed to a compressor. Now that said, you will pay for it. Uh, a compressor is pay once you're done. Uh, at least here in Victoria, I think it's about 20 or... It's about 50 or so, I think, to fill a 20-pound tank. Which isn't bad, but... Uh, Depending on how much gas you like to use, it does add up. Another consumable. Oh, that looks good. And I get far enough into these builds sometimes and I begin to wonder, do I just want to do a Black Nightingale? <laughs> the answer is no. Uh, if I were to be doing a different color for this, it would absolutely be Desert Tan. I've seen someone who customized their nightingale with uh, desert colors, and I'm, I was... Oh, that's a lovely, lovely build, but... I think we're going to keep this one standard. Because, you know... Char, right? Char, Char, he's our boy. If he can't do it, he'll fake his own death and come back under a new name. And try again. Another reason I went with CO2 is that I currently live in a CO2-based household uh, in the sense that we have our kegerator, which takes CO2 to pressurize and serve beer. Uh, we got the paintball tanks that I used with an adapter from a soda stream. And uh, I mean, that's it. It's already too... That's already two other things I have to go to the gas store for, so if I can chain those together in any way, more power to me. Oh, 
boy, that was a not a lot of uh, parts painted with that amount of primer. Folks, we're coming to the end of the show here. Um, I'm going to stick around and finish the parts that I've got on alligator clips because otherwise I'm wasting my time. Because it does take a while to... This is the one thing about airbrushing is you kind of got kind to of make time for it. You can't just sit down and do two or three strokes because there is cleanup involved to keep your airbrush nice and tidy. Because if you don't, then it gets clogged. And if it gets too clogged, well, if it gets clogged at all, you're going to have a bad time. If it gets too clogged, you're going to have a much longer bad time. Thankfully, I have not had a long bad time yet, but it might be time for me to do a quick, uh, not a quick, but a, a cheeky uh, ultrasonic clean of the airbrush. You need a bit more primer in there as well. That said, while we're uh, winding out the episode here, I want to remind you to check out uh, loadingreadyrun.com slash live, because that's where you can find out where all the great shows are happening and when they're happening. we got uh, Magic the Gathering tomorrow in the afternoon. We have Play It Forward in the morning, like we do for Saturday, Sunday, and uh, that's it as well. Uh, Loading Ready Live is Saturday, so uh, check out that. And uh, Rhythm Cafe on Sunday, followed by Is This Your Card? And then Monday returns and we do the whole week over again. Because we all live on this planet. Right? Uh, check out store.loadingreadyrun.com to give us your money in the most direct way possible. But also, you can give us money over at youtube.com slash loadingreadyrun. Uh, there was an ask where that went up today with Heather and Serge and Adam, which I know is going to be a, a banger of an episode, if you like those. And if you want to ask us questions in future ask letters, uh, becoming that member at youtube.com slash loadingreadyrun is how you do it. You can also check out loadingreadyrun.com. Oh, straight, not that one. Uh, YouTube.com slash loadingreadyrun for all the great shows. That's where our premium content goes. YouTube.com slash loadingreadylives, where all of our streamium content goes. That's the streams. And if you like magic content, check out YouTube.com slash LRRMTG for all of the card stuff that is Magic the Gathering. Not all the card stuff that belongs to either. Let's see here. Uh, I will eventually get to reading out those people who subbed and bitted for us today, but uh, I'm going to say thanks for watching. It's been an absolute blast hanging out with y'all here for this. And uh, maybe we'll find a better way to uh, shoot this in the future. Maybe I can convince the, uh, the powers that be to build a, uh, a fume hood at the moon base, and we can get some, uh, some painting done there. Because why not? Because now we've uh, committed to this. We've got to see it through the end, right? Right? Yeah. It's always weird dealing with primer, because I think to myself, like, ooh, this is a nice looking coat, Ian. Yeah, you're almost done. Like, no. This is coat one of three, at least, just a pink. Or at least a colorant. Um, yeah, for those curious, next step is going to be a uh, slightly yellowish. Actually, it might even just be straight yellow, TBH. Because that's a really good way to provide highlights for your uh, for your reds. Maybe yellowy orange is what we might go for. And that's just going to cover not even most of That's going to go on top of the black. The black's going to provide the, the shadows. The yellow is going to be there for highlights. And then we're going to go over with a coat of red over top of that. And that's going to be our final fading level. Then come the clear coats. At least one clear coat for, 
before we get down the, the panel lining. And uh, depending on how close some of those lines are to where Jekyll needs to go, we might even put down a second clear coat over top of that and then Jekyll. And then finally, finally, we will uh, finish with a matte clear coat to uh, just bring the whole thing together. These are some very nice pieces. This one, I just want to bring that this back. This is the one we were having some spotting on. As you can see, most of the spotting's gone away. Although, it has, uh, it has highlighted this little bit of an indent, maybe of a, uh, a mold issue. I don't know if I'm going to do anything about that, because I might not care. But uh, that's part of that surfacing that, uh, that effect the primer gives you. The reason I might not do anything about that is because I've learned the difference between uh, inspection at this level versus inspection at the, the three-foot level. And, uh, and once you get to three feet, a lot of those imperfections just disappear. Now that said, if I was going to be competing in model making anywhere, different story, absolutely. All right, let's get that down there. Yeah. The parts on the Neko Note station are starting to get pretty jammed up, so we might not actually be able to get all of these pieces that we have primed as is, which just means I'm going to have to go down to the dollar store tomorrow and actually pick up that uh, the wavy Neko station. Maybe I'll just cover the sides and tape and hope and pray. So you can see I was blowing the tip out there because I was starting to feel a bit of uh, resistance and possibly getting a bit spatter. It feels bad to do that uh, with, you know, paint that I paid for. Which is not to say that I didn't pay for the paint before, but, you know, when you're using dollar store paints that are literally a dollar a bottle, it doesn't feel quite as bad to uh, just blow some out in the name of efficiency. Okay, I think we got maybe one or two left in this. I'm going to do the small parts here too, because the big ones I don't think are going to fit in the station. Here we go, look at that. The fun part about this is we are not going to see this model reassembled until it is, uh, until it's deckled at time. It's going to be essentially unrecognizable up to that point. And nope. Right there. There we go. That got it. All right, two more. I think we can get one more after this uh, if I readjust the uh, the spring. So let's get this foot down. This part is probably the least artistic. You're just laying down a base coat. Paint stick to and dreams to live on. <laughs> Alright, last one. This time I promise. 
we got that much, uh, about this much part left in the in the paint. This will hang off the edge of the Neko note station like that pretty well without touching anything. I think we're good to go. Are any other pieces touching each other right now? No, they are not. Good. Ooh. One more sip of the drink here. Lottie asks, do you paint the areas that no one will ever see because I know, or are you one of the I'll save some paint persuasion? I've come around to the I'll save some paint or save some time. Um, partially because paint costs money, takes time, and also because I found that uh, it doesn't help. And in fact, sometimes it hurts. Especially if you're spraying into areas that might be holes where you need to you know, push a piece through. So, for example, this this is definitely one of those pieces. Uh, I'm not going to spend much time inside here because this piece is completely covered over by a, a black piece that covers over that. Um, I'm going to get the edges of these windows because those are going to be visible, but... Uh, like, I'm definitely one of those finish the back of your cabinet people. But when it comes to these models, there's a difference between, you know, looking around the back occasionally and taking the whole god thing, damn thing apart. It's not a safe painting. It's definitely a safe time and... I want to say effort, but... I don't even know. It's really just, it really is just time. I am, as you can see, though, getting the edge of the bottom because that is absolutely show through. And so you end up getting a little bit of over spray there. Okay. Uh, that. Uh, got a little bit left. You know what? One more. Let's see if we can uh, finish this up with what we've got. I got a piece of styrofoam, we can stick this in. Speaking of using up paint. That's all the visible visible pieces on that. Ah, uh, do we dare try the other side of the foot with what we got in there? You know what? Might as well. One sec. Where's my foam? There you are. Yeah, turns out uh, little bits of foam like this, just stick them in like that. Although, if you want double, you want double foam to get that. Uh, Hold it up correctly a little bit better. Okay, I think this is the last of it. So I think we'll probably stick with the same schedule of roughly once a month for a uh, a Gunpla stream. And then we'll fill in the rest of the episodes of the months with, uh, with the usual style. Well, not the usual style, but with uh, non-Gunpla, non-model builds. Because we don't want this show to become just a, uh, a Gunpla and model streaming show. Unless you like that, in which case, uh, leave a comment in, I don't know, info at loadingreadyrun.com, C-C-A-T-T-N-E-N.
or find me on Twitter. Or find me on the web anywhere at tiltyhous That's a valid URL that you can use in your modern web browser. Please do not tell, tell Tim Berners-Lee. I don't know how he feels about all those extended domains. All right. And that basically, we're basically done in terms of uh, what we got in that pot. You can barely see it. Yeah, that's definitely going to be visible up there. That's it. That is all of the red parts on the left-hand side, except for the giant binder. Primed and ready for paint. I'm too far back. I'm excited about this. Uh, let me just get some airbrush cleaner in that uh, in the bowl. Whirl it around with a little bit of uh, Q-tip here. This is this is oh hell. We forgot one. Well, we're going to be priming more stuff in the near, or I'm going to be priming more stuff in the near future, so I'm not too worried about that. If we can get some of this primer off the edges there. Oh yeah, this is going to be a hell to clean, but oh well, such is the life of a modeler. As I'm looking in there, a little bit cleaner. Not perfect, but at least you can see some of the bare metal again. Okay, folks, Whew. let's get the mask off and <laughs> let's get to thanking some uh, some of you folks here. Uh, I'm gonna go to big. Oh, I'm gonna turn my chair. Push this thing. This fan to the side just a bit and let you look at some of these lovely, lovely pieces as we uh, call it an evening. And make sure they're not touching each other because if you do, that causes marks and that one is just a bit. There we go. That seems good. Okay. Ah, uh, let's have a look at who has been generous and, uh, on twitch.tv for us today. The ta 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 with MTG Ranger, who is an 18 month subscriber. 18 months? Ah, indeed. Thank you. Thank you as well to Cam for that raid early in the show. We got to thank 62MG Cobra for 41 months of subscription goodness. Bio Atarkis, who is a 19 month subscriber, almost one year, coming from a really dark time, a terrible relationship and deep depression. One of the things that kept me going for all these streams, I, I'm usually quiet, but I appreciate you at LRR and the community. You have fostered, build the thing, but good, Ian. You are an inspiration. Well, thank you, Biotarchus, and thank you for those kind words to the community and uh, to the rest of us. And hope things uh, continue to uh, get better for you as, you as you come out of that. Um, stay strong. And also, uh, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, I want to uh, definitely want to remind all of you that you're all uh, loved here, whether you're chatting in the chat, whether you're subscribing, or if you're just lurking. Thanks for watching. Disgruntled spectator, or sorry, distrusting spectator, 13 months, 13 months of loyalty to creators worth so much more than Bezos pays. Thank you for those. Uh, Wiggins! Wiggins is subscribed for a full 100 months, which transformers this Mazinger Z. Oh, I'm afraid you're, uh, you're, you're, you're looking for the GoBots, uh, Matt. Uh, leader 1 is uh, going to be coming up. God, if I could find a Leader 1 Gunpla, I would build it. Gorgon's Mind, 71 months. Thank you for the continued support there. Hey there, Enthus, subscribing for 52 months. Error 404, would he comment not found? Eh. There's always next month. Ampenstein, 36 months of subscription. Thank you for your support. Omnilord is a brand new subscriber. Thank you for joining the channel. Thrrr. Nope. Themlin. That's all there is. 
Pete Heidzel says the 27 month subscriber. Thank you for that. Thank you to Iris of Ether for your 30 months of subscription. Hello. Yes, nice Gundam. It is nice. Very happy with it. Earthen One, 48 months, two years. Thank you for your subscription and thank you to Xantos69 for those 50 bits, da bits, da bits. That's the end of the show for tonight. We will see you in a fortnight's time, never in fortnight. And as we say every time here, ever forward, learning out of spite. We'll see you next time.